in days gone by, if you didn't know the answer to a question, you might have looked it up in what an encyclopedia. These days, of course, the instant reaction is probably to look it up online. Is this habit making us more forgetful? Researchers in America suggest we're relying on the internet as an extension of our own brains, meaning we neglect our memories. They say constant fact-checking, often on search engines like Google, I mean, we don't absorb information as we should. So, maybe we should resist the temptation to log on. We asked people what they thought. I remember doing reports and things for school and having, like, Encyclopedia Britannica, and that's the only information that you could use. And now, it's pretty much limitless. I think you need both. I think you need books, and, but you need Google as well. I think what's amazing is the amount of information we're now getting. It's really important to get more and more information. It's incredible how much information is actually, um, you know, available to us. If I don't know how to do something in the kitchen, I'll just Google it. Yeah, Google I no longer, like... You know, you don't have it on find your a book. Yeah. It's just, it's there, easy to access. I, do look, I rely on it a lot. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. just say it, it's a common phrase, Google it. We are becoming lazy, but it is actually something that's too easy to use. And so it's a lot harder to do the alternative. And always using Google seems to be a strange thing. I don't know when that happened. It's as there were lots of other search engines, but it always seems to crystallised in one. Some internet sites are quite good and useful because some books can be too much information, too factual, so you don't really understand. I think it's a brilliant resource and we, I couldn't do my job without it, but the stuff I look up yesterday I won't remember today and I'll have to look it up again tomorrow if I need it again. It's, yeah, it's one of those things. Technologic. Lots of you talking about this. With us to discuss this are historian Kate Williams and LJ Rich, who's a reporter for the BBC's technology programme, Click. Morning, both. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it is a temptation, isn't it? For example, if you've got children, they go, what's this? And you say, I'll just have a quick look. What do you think, Kate? You don't think it's a good idea? It's true. It's easy to Google. And I do it, the rest of us. You know, we're sitting in the pub and someone goes, oh, something about Churchill. So, oh, let's Google it, rather than trying to remember. But the, the problem is, I mean, the internet has been incredible for history. There are so many amazing sites. Uh, Magna Carta's online now. Those, the National Archives site in which the, we can see how Britain got bombed in the Blitz. The census online has revolutionised family history. But for primary sources, it's great. But in terms of looking into actually what happened, I think books have to be the most important thing, number one, because they are reliable. But also, there is the key question here is that Google isn't always there. Sometimes in life we have to counter people's arguments, and it's not there. We see, we see politicians use history, we see many people use history in public life, and we can't argue it if we don't know those historical facts, which are the kind of basis of historical knowledge. We, we need to know the dates of the First World War before we can debate what kind of impact it had. LG, this is the world you inhabit, you know, professionally, possibly personally as well, of, uh, of technology. So where, where are the pitfalls, where are the dangers of the incredible access to information that it gives you? Well, there's obviously, actually, even, for things like the internet, it's a tool that we as humans use, and it's how we interpret the information that's the most important thing. A book is just as likely to be wrong as, say, any other piece of information. It just is that on the internet, there's vast swathes of information. The trick is, is being able to decipher what's true and what isn't, and that's just as hard whether you're online or you're offline. The internet's an amazing resource. It allows you to take degrees online. There's free courses. There's a, a site called edX. It's not for profit. You can learn everything from public speaking to an introduction to electronics in Mandarin with English subtitles. You can do this for free. So for everyone who's going to say, well, the internet's actually there's there's a danger in finding you know, self-diagnosing on the internet, for example. If you're going to the wrong sites to find out medical advice, then you're going to get the wrong information. In the same way with history, the books and a lot of the stuff that survives to today, well, a lot of those are going to be written by the winners. So everything needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. I'm, I'm, I'm interested whether or not we actually... The, I think the, the, the thing they're trying to point out is, do we actually learn it? If you look it up, mm -hmm. do you actually take it on board? Right. The study was uh, the one that I read, yeah. which I found on the internet. And you've remembered. <laughs> <laughs> and I've remembered. Talks about this thing called transactive memory. Yeah. Uh, people were told that something that they were going to remember was going to be saved by a computer. Yeah. Now, if you knew, for example, that Charlie remembers the next few items that are going to be on BBC Breakfast, you might not feel as much need or compulsion to remember 
remember those things because you know that somebody else is remembering it for you. There's a problem with that. <laughs> well, <laughs> you might not remember them. But anyway, you, that's I see true. what you're saying. That's, that's, no, that's a good <laughs> point. That's a fair <laughs> point. It's, 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 it's a good point. It's a very, it's a very, a very interesting other survey yesterday that was saying that actually we can't run. Children these days can't run as fast as their parents, and my generation can't run as fast as their parents because we don't run anymore. Because actually, the human body is a muscle. All of it's a muscle. If we don't use it, we lose it. And so, if we don't use memory, we will lose it. And what worries me is if we don't lose our memory, eventually what we'll be able, ev evolutionary terms, what we'll be all we'll be able to do is press return and press press uh, press the buttons on the computer. We won't be able to remember because in the old days before we had mobiles, we all we all knew phone numbers off by heart. But who knows phone numbers off by heart now? Uh, one of the th thoughts <laughs> that occurs to me is that information is one thing, wisdom is something else entirely, isn't it? It's about context and about how, how things that you can find out mm -hmm. link to other things. In fact, yes. And there's a danger that people, you think people are clever because they can access things quickly. Well, but that's, this, a yeah. complete, that's a completely different skill set, isn't it? That's just about be, being yeah. No, this is short-term memory versus mastery of a subject. Mm. You can learn how to take a radiator off a wall on YouTube. What you can't learn in those five minutes that you've taken the radiator off a wall is what to do when there's water everywhere. The idea with that is that you need to have some plumbing experience behind you or some study. Can I give Kate a last thought? Go on. Well, I agree. I agree that we need to have long... Because short-term memory, Googling things, we're not going to remember them. And if we rely on Google, I think that what LJ said is right. We have to think, OK, Google's there, but we can't rely on it because if we do, we'll end up remembering nothing and just pressing buttons and not being able to run, and it's a dis distressing picture for evolution. We should remember there are <laughs> other search engines available as well. <laughs> yes. Thanks both. Thank you Thank very you. much. Let's see. Time now, 7:44. You're watching Breakfast from BBC News.